So let's continue with voltage dividers and resistive loads. So we're going to look at um, what happens uh, when we move loads on and off of the uh, of the outputs. A voltage divider produces an output voltage V out of five volts because the two resistors are of equal value. We can see that in the diagram. This voltage is the unloaded output voltage. When a load resistor R sub L is connected from the output to ground as shown, the output voltage is reduced by an amount that depends upon the value of the load resistor. The load resistor is in parallel with R2, again we can see that in the diagram, reducing the resistance from node A to ground, and as a result, also reducing the voltage across the parallel combination. This is one effect of loading a voltage divider. Another effect of a load is that more current is drawn from the source because the total resistance of the circuit is reduced. So we can look at this. Let's look at uh, putting a, uh, a meter on the output here and making some variations here. The larger load resistor is compared to R2, the less the output voltage is reduced from an unloaded value. When the load resistor is large compared to R2, at least 10 times larger, the loading effect is small and the output voltage will change only a small amount from its unloaded value. In this case, the divider is said to be a stiff voltage divider. So, you know, if you put a big heavy load on here with lots of resistance, um, it's not going to draw a lot of current. But if you put some wimpy load on here, um, it's going to cause this power, if you will, this power supply, this voltage divider, to go into overdrive and uh, really start pumping out the current, and you could burn something up. So let's take a look at this, uh, this little example here where we have a load resistor in parallel with R2. Determine the unloaded output voltage of the voltage divider. Find the loaded output voltages of the voltage divider for the following two values of the load, R load at 10 K ohms and R load at 100 K ohms. Okay, so the unloaded output voltage is as, as such. So we have V out unloaded and what we do here is we create our voltage divider. So we've got R2 divided by the sum of R1 and R2 in series multiplied times the source voltage. So this gives us a value then when we load it up and put all of the, the uh, values into the terms we get 3.40 volts at the load. So now with the 10 K ohm resistor load resistor connected to the load and is in parallel with R2. We write our product over the sum because they're both now in parallel. So R2, RL, R2 plus RL and we end up with a equivalent resistance between R2 and R load of 5 K ohms. So the equivalent circuit with loaded output then is V out now loaded and you can see the change here is we we're placing R2 and RL in parallel as compared to just R2 up here. And so we do the same thing top and bottom, multiply it times the source voltage and now we get 2.58 volts of output measured across RL. So it would be between the point and ground. Now we put the 100 K ohm resistor load in here and watch what happens. The resistance from the output to the ground then is such that we've got, um, we've changed this from 10 K to 100 K and we end up with 9.1 K ohms of equivalent resistance with those two resistors. Okay, so now let's take a look at um, a circuit here where we've got R1 at 4.7K and R2 
than 5k ohms uh, where we're showing R2 in parallel with the load resistance. So V out loaded then becomes R2 in parallel with the load resistor and the product over the sum and we get 3.30 volts of output when we do that. Okay, so for smaller load values, smaller resistors on the output, the reduction in V out is 3.4 volts minus 2.58 volts or 8 tenths of a volt. For the larger value of the load resistor, the reduction of V out is 3.4 minus 3.3, which is 0.3. Okay, that's incorrect there. That should be 1 tenth. Okay, we'll make that uh, correction. So this illustrates the loading effect of the load resistor on the voltage divider. So taking a look at voltage dividers again with a current load and a bleeder current. In a multiple tap loaded voltage divider circuit, the total current drawn from the source consists of current through the load resistors called load currents and the divider resistors. A voltage divider with two voltage outputs or two taps. So we can see here in the diagram where we've got the, a load one and a load two and then here you can see that we've got what's called the bleeder current on the bottom. The total current is composed of two branches the current RL1 and I2. Okay so here and here. The current I2 is composed of the two additional branch currents RL2 and I3. So here's RL1, here's RL2. Current I3 then is called the bleeder current. The current left after the total current load is subtracted from the total current in the circuit. And here's our calculation here. So to determine the bleeder current, we take the total, we subtract the load 1 current, the load 2 current, and that leaves us with the bleeder. Okay, determine the load currents 1 and 2 and the bleeder current 3 in the 2 cap two tap loaded voltage divider. Okay, so we can set the circuit up um, where we identify the, uh, the point for the first current and the point for the second current, okay, and where we simplify the relationship here as R2 plus B. Okay, so the equivalent resistance from node A to ground is 100 K ohms load resistor or RL1 in parallel with the combination of R2 in series with the parallel combination of R3 and RL2. So we determine the resistance values first. R3 in parallel with load resistor 2 is designated as RB. So if we roll back here, there's our RB right there. Um, the resulting equivalent circuit then is shown in 733A. So if we roll back here, okay, and there we go, there's the diagram. So if we set up then for solving for the resistance for RB, we have the product over the sum, R3, RL2, R3 plus RL2, and we end up with a corresponding resistance of 5.84 K ohms. R2 is in series with RB and is designated as R2 plus B. Okay, so here's R2 plus B down here. So R2 plus B is equal to 6.2 K ohms plus 5.84 K ohms or 12 K ohms of resistance. The resistance load 1 in parallel with R2 plus B is designated as RA. Okay, so now you can see here we've simplified that RA where we've combined these two resistors together. 
The resulting equivalent circuit then is shown. So RA then is equal to RL1 R2 plus B divided by the sum. So we get 10.7 K ohms of resistance. RA then is the total resistance from node A to ground. So from node A to ground right here. The total resistance for the circuit then is RA plus R1. So there's RA, there's R1. Added together, 10.7K plus 12K gives us 22.7K of total resistance for the circuit. So now let's determine the voltage across load 1 as follows, using the equivalent circuit from 733C. So again, we're going to use that last iteration of circuits. So resistance, the voltage drop across resistor load 1 is equal to the voltage at point at the point from A. Okay, the voltage divider relationship then is used. RA divided by the total resistance times the source gives us 11.3 volts. So if we were to measure here, we would get 11.3 volts. The current load through RL then becomes the voltage at load resistor 1 and the value of resistor load 1. So 11.3 volts divided by 100K gives us a current now of 113 microamps. Then they ask to determine the voltage at node B by using the equivalent circuit 733A and the voltage at node A. So that was the first iteration. Okay, So they want us to solve down here for resistor B. So again, resistor B divided by resistor 2 plus B times the voltage at A gives us a value of five and a half volts. Okay, so that's our voltage then drop across RB. The load current through RL2 then is the voltage drop RL2 divided by the resistor value RL2, which gives us 55 microamps of current. Finally, we can solve the bleeder current. Remember the bleeder current is what's left over here at the bottom. And so that is VB, okay, the voltage taken at from B to ground, divided by R3, or 5.5 volts divided by 6.2 K ohms, 887 microamps of current. Okay, so when we come back, let's take a look at loading effects on voltmeters and understand what the loading effect is all about.